everyone, please, please relax. We're here. The boys are back and we're doing it. This is another episode of Loud About Nothing. Okay, 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 okay. Everyone relax. Everyone relax. It's me. It's your boy. It's your boy, fucking CBS Provolone himself, the fucking mogul, the hottest dude in the podcast game, okay? That thotty, boo body, Sebastian Canelli, okay? Okay, okay, okay. It is I, it is I. Everyone calm down, please, please relax. We're trying to get through the fucking opening, okay? He's here every week. He's looking cute to boots, okay? His biceps are looking swole as fuck today, okay? It's my nephew. It's Robbie boy. Robbie, say what's up. What's up, Sebastian? Robbie, this is beautiful. We got we got fire today. Yeah, we have a mogul. We an have, actual mogul. We have an actual mo- I mean, we only an do actual moguls. podcasting mogul. But we have an actual podcasting mogul, right? He yes. hosts a podcast, like Cocholista. Oh, did you hear that, <laughs> Mama? <laughs> Yes. There was too many <laughs> syllables in the title of that. <laughs> uh, oh my god. <laughs> Yo, he hosted it with Bo and Yang. <laughs> okay, shut the fuck up. Yo, Matt, let me finish this. I'm Got already that one right. I'm crushing, okay? <laughs> he has a show on HBO Max. Hot dog. It's coming back oh. on February 4th. Okay, give it up for Matt Rogers, okay? <laughs> Um, moguls only, moguls <laughs> only. Thank moguls you so much. Okay, and I'm only. so happy that sort of like we can just break through, cut through like the tension that happened when I first came on the Zoom, which okay. is that Robbie is truly hot. And you were like, yes! he's looking good with his trap. He's looking cute. It's really true. And now we said it. And now we said it. And Matt, I saw right through you. Have we met before? I knew you I did. Saw right through that. I knew you did. You looked at me and you said horn dog. I know. And you were right. I, I sorry, saw, Robbie. Yo, it's I'll tell right. you this. Matt, I hope that empowers you. It, it, it does. Should. It empowers. It does. Good. I it should empower. I'm a fan you. of yours, so that's nice. Thank you very much. That's nice. Yeah. I, I think we're gonna be taking it to DM later, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Definitely I mean, gonna be taking it to the DMs later. Matt, Let's see how far we can get. I'll tell you this. I have a fucking. Uh, I have a picture of Robbie in just a towel with his fucking. He he has. What? I don't know if you use this term, but he has cum gutters. Robbie has cum Bitch, gutters. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I actually, I, I'm thrilled to hear it. And what is your address? I'm plugging it into my Uber. <laughs> I'm plugging it into my Uber so I can come over and see I'm the picture. Not Poconos, you, Robbie. Right? I want to work uh, for that one. Uh, yes. Oh, you're in the Poconos. <laughs> all right. The Poconos. So you're contributing to all the cum staining happening on the couches in the Poconos. You yes. understand the Poconos is a very is very synonymous with having couches sort of covered in cum. It is. No, I did not know that. Yeah, as a vac- is as that a what it's notorious for? As a vacation destination, it's like you go up there and stay in the Poconos, and it's like, what the fuck is this? And it's like an old couch that's like, what's going on? And you turn the black light on it, the, all the couches in the Poconos are covered in jizz. <laughs> I heard that the Poconos almost went out of business when black light was invented because there was so much coming yeah. to town that that they were like, <laughs> they were we'll, like we'll never survive this. That's the real. They were like, w- they were like, we very well may not survive this. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, it was a health issue. It was. It was. And Robbie is not helping because he's he's coming all over. B- b- no, b- it's not. he's coming all over I'm that town. Alone. He's alone. OK. All right. All right. Leave the boy alone. I will. Leave the boy alone. I will. I will. I'm so I'm sorry. I took it to this place. I just no, I'm so fine. happy that you mentioned the handsomeness because then we could talk about it. No, uh, we talk about it all the time. I call myself the hot, hottie bubadi. I, you are. And when you <laughs> said you were the thotty bubadi, I was like, absolutely. <laughs> That, that that is the way I would describe you. That's thank you, thank you so much. You know why? You know why you get it? Cause you're why? from the scumbag place like I am. We're both 100%. from the worst places in the world. We're both trash, and we're both trained to be this disgusting. Oh. That's the thing: is the culture made us this way, born this way. Lady Gaga wrote that song about us <laughs> being trash. Yes, everyone thinks it's elegant. It's this beautiful song about about being yourself. No, it's it's you suck. You're disgusting. You're a scumbag. But you you have to be. That's you the- have to be because that's what you re- that's what your atmosphere required of you. This, this is exactly this is why I'm happy you're here when every when anyone comes and they're on the podcast, they're from the Midwest. It's nice when anyone comes and they're from fucking an island. That's Long where islands. the truth happens. We bring that coastal bitch energy <laughs> yes. and that I am going to say what I think. I'll tell you something. I dated a guy for two and a half years that was from the Midwest. Uh huh. 
you can't it, it's it's too it's too wide a gap it's mm-hmm. you it can't be crossed because people from the midwest will genuinely put up with shit that really hurts and makes them angry and long island if one thing annoys me i'm like yeah. what the fuck is that <laughs> robbie robbie tell them what you said about me right before matt showed up uh that Sebastian is famous for one small inconvenience that happens around him, and he goes, "What is happening?" Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what because is it's happening? Something, because it's an irregularity. Yes. What is happening? Yes, uh, anything that is out of the ordinary, I am screaming and yelling about till it's solved. Yes, and th- I was. I always say people from where I'm from, Long Island, and we know it well. We do. Um, like they instead of just saying no. It's always like, no, here's why I'm saying no. Here's the history around the decision. Mm -hmm. Here is extra things I think about other things in the situation that you didn't ask about, (laughs) period. So you know how I feel in the immediate and how I feel in the macro at all times because you're trained to take up that much toxic space. (laughs) That's what it is. That is such a beautiful encapsulation of what it is. Because there are stupid questions where we're from. And people, mm-hmm. even if it's a smart How are you? Yes. <laughs> you're fucking asking me? I'll tell you this. My mother died four years ago. Breast cancer. You don't want to get me started. What do you mean, how are you? Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> Mad at whoever the government is. Always. Never happy with anything. Always. And another thing is, um, sometimes the way my mother would end conversations on the phone, women on the phone on Long Island is a whole thing. Oh. But she would end conversations with being like this. Not saying goodbye. Not saying I have a great night, which she would say, I'll talk to you. <laughs> I'll talk to you. <laughs> like, I'll talk to you. Like she's running to Click. another conversation. Like, I'll talk to you. Like, yeah. I'm sure we'll follow up at length. <laughs> Positive. I'll talk to you. Click. Like, done. Inch- My mom doesn't. Yeah, right. She doesn't say goodbye. She goes, all right. And then the hang. Yeah, all right. All right. And the hang. Up. All right. Like, constant motion. Mm-hmm. My mother's Literally. retired, sits upstairs, and, and lies on the shade like a mermaid all day. I don't know what she's in the, where she's running to all wow. the time. Wow, <laughs> she's probably, she's probably really exploring her mind now. She is. She's ex- now that shit can slow down. Yeah, she's really exploring her mind. She's on Amazon buying my, uh, my nephew shit all day. That's all she does. There we go. And she, there we go. That is, that is an exploration. I have a question for you, Matt. I probably have an answer. This is beautiful. Okay, I remember. Of, of when I, I was at your house one time and there was a room mm-hmm. and your dad had a room full of yes. stuff. Okay. I, am I wrong about this? Right. There was a room full You're of stuff. Not wrong at all. Yep. Was it all Jimmy Buffett stuff? Thank you for asking so that I can clarify this for okay. everyone that's been sort of spreading rumors. There's been a lot of rumors <laughs> about, to talk what on is, <laughs> about what is um, up in the room, and I would love the opportunity to clarify. It was not Jimmy Buffett themed. Okay. However, it, there was a Jimmy Buffett corner of the room that was themed to Jimmy Buffett. Okay, so there was a like a little bar area, and that was all Jimmy Buffett paraphernalia. The room itself was parrot themed. <gasps> so you understand where the confusion is. It's because the room itself, the larger den, mm-hmm. was not a Jimmy Buffett room, but there was a devoted Jimmy Buffett corner. Thank you so much for allowing that. Okay, yes, yes, yes. People I, might think it was tacky if the whole thing was Jimmy Buffett, you know? It's people class. might think it was a little uh, weird then. No, no, that's like how my kitchen, my parents' kitchen is pineapple themed for some reason. I'm sure. <laughs> well, because just... pineapple is on land, and a kitchen is the land, and the bathroom is the sea. You get the logic. You get the logic. The yes, bathroom, the bathroom, the bathroom is the sea. Yes, it's the sea of the home, and the land of the home is the kitchen. Yeah, that's where the land stuff happens, like cooking. You you have to understand, you have to keep up. And then sometimes, sometimes in a living room, uh-huh. you'll get some mountain energy. Some. But it too is more of a barn, more of a farm. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like it's earthly. Possessions. I have the, I have a, a paintings on my wall in my living room of people doing bonfires. Well, first of all, we have to say congratulations to having paintings up on the wall in your home. Okay. okay. Well, I, I want to say this. There's also my parents. They try. They try to be classy, but we are still who we are. There is a there is a Picasso, like a a poster of a Picasso framed in the bathroom above the toilet bowl. <laughs> okay. A poster of a Picasso. That's yes. really good. Yeah. That's really good. I I, I have to mm-hmm. say too, like when people come to see my apartment now, like. 
for example, you can see me right now. The people at home, because podcasts are not really a visual medium, they won't be able no. to see me. But what's behind me is what I would call a print from West Elm. Now, okay. let's walk this back. If you're going to put up a print on your wall, it probably should be something by an artist that you admire or like a picture that's nostalgic for you. What I have behind me is a print from West Elm that's blue and white, and I got it because the couch is also blue. No other thought went into this. I just wanted to fill the space. And um, this is what happens when you grow up not understanding what it means to have any taste. So <laughs> what will go down is you'll just put something on the wall just because it exists in the world mm -hmm. and can fill a space. There's no intention behind it. I don't know who I I am as a result of it being here. I mean, I mean, I, I have to fill the space behind me and it's a challenge because the only things that I like are trash. That looks really intentional to me. It looks it's really intentional. And intentional. I want you to talk about all the pieces. No, it's just trash. I want you to talk about the pieces. But it's trash. It's all just, it's all. What are the pieces? Sneakers. You can't, it's sneakers. You can't. One of them is Shannon O'Neill's paintings. Sneakers? You can't call them trash, Sebastian. <laughs> oh, this is Shannon. But what about that beautiful, that beautiful piece behind you? Like the, those blue, is that a blue sky? It's so beautiful. It's a, it's a, Shannon took a sneaker and she put yellow paint on it and then put it on a canvas for me. <laughs> That's really cool and individual. And I think that you're doing amazing. And I'm actually so proud of your development of your taste. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I am reverting back to who I was when I was a teenager a little bit. Is that what's happening to you in quarantine? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting deeper into the things that I used to love. Like, uh, like I'm into sneakers again. And I look at a lot of, we talk about velour jumpsuits. I, I really want to get me up. We talk about. We talk, like, we talk about. One topic is on the show velour is we talk about velour jumpsuits. We we talk, talk. I just got this jumpsuit today. Okay. <gasps> okay. Okay. This is it. See, this is I why. I got a sweatsuit today. I'm, I'm, I'm modeling my sweatsuit that I just got today that I'm really feeling myself in because the person who designed it is a gay 21 year old son of a real housewife of Salt Lake City. And I saw the fashion wow. show for it happen on the show, The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And so uh -huh. I bought it for $124. And I posted today and I tagged him. His name is Brooks Marks. And he got in the DMs and said, you look fire emoji. Thank you Beautiful. so much for the support. And so I got everything I wanted out of this situation. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. And that's Matt. what made today a good day for me. Congrats. You need that is you, a good day. You the only packages, need one. They like make the day sometimes when you order stuff and just one thing. Oh, when you over order stuff and it's something beautiful? I love getting packages. And then you can wear it, yeah. Did you get yeah, the did you get the beautiful the, the beautiful prints behind you? Did that come in the mail or did that or the canvas? Did that come in the mail or did you go to the store to pick this that up? This is such a good question. And I'm so happy that you gave me the opportunity to ask it because a lot of people are starting to spread rumors about how the print got here. That's and I just why really you're want to here. get out ahead of this. That's why you're here. Matt. It's to clear the air. Yes. It's to clear the air. So I did buy the print online mm -hmm. because of the coronavirus pandemic. Heard of it? So I have everything in this room I actually did buy in the store at West Elm. But because and only because of the coronavirus pandemic did I order this print online. And it took quite a while to get here, but it did safely. Thank you so much for letting me clear that up, that that, that distinction. Everyone was thro throwing shade your way. Everyone was yeah. sending me messages being like, I hear Matt goes into stores. He's looking at yeah. prints of people, not even famous artists to pick yeah, out. Twitter was Twitter was really ugly mm -hmm. that day. Um, and I just want to say that it gets really ugly online yes. and we need to think about how we're people. Okay. I'm a person. I know. I saw I, people were saying you were taking your mask off. You said I got a better view when the mask is off at the, at the picture. I saw, I saw oh the tweets, God. man. That's such, that is such hearsay. Mm -hmm. I took my mask off because I don't believe that you need to wear masks. That's why I took it off. And this is why it's he's not, here. Yes. Yeah, so, I, and I'm, in, and this is another reason. Thank you for allowing me to come on of here. Course, is to just of sort course. of spread my anti-mask uh, propaganda, <laughs> and that's something that I really, <laughs> because it is propaganda, and I'm here to confirm it. It is propaganda. Um, but I'm here. That's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to do. Well, so thank you. Thank you. I bought a, I bought a nice uh, big print in quarantine. Also, um, congrats to you. <laughs> Am I just flexing right now? You truly are that fatty do body. <laughs> oh my god! Now he's buying prints. Okay, so we have to ask Robbie, what's your deal decor wise? Yeah. Uh, 
I just have lights and <laughs> LeBron James <laughs> Lakers themed shoes. But you don't not need really any bells much. and whistles. No, you don't need any bells and whistles. I'm not. You're, I still have a good. Christmas tree up. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Sebastian's like, when are you going to take the lights down? I'm like, I'm going to keep them up. They make me feel happy. I'm here alone. Honestly, I my tree is still up as well. So you're not alone there. If I feel it fills the space. Is it a real yeah. tree, though? Yeah, she's a fake tree, you know. Yeah, of okay. course. And, she, and ra rather small, too. Oh, um, okay. So then you could keep you could yeah. keep her up if it's a, uh, she's a fake tree. Just for now. Okay. Just for now. Beautiful. So, Matt, I ask every yeah. guest to come on and get loud about something. I say, oh, Matt, he knows so much. He, he has, he's so passionate about so many topics. What is Matt going to throw <laughs> our way? You know? Yeah. And you, Matt, mm -hmm. what would you like to get loud about? I want to get loud about math. <laughs> I feel we need to get loud about math because I was really thinking. And Sebastian, I want I want you to know that yeah. like I could have I could have like really sat down and gave like a, a bullshit answer. Like sometimes when I go on podcasts, they want to hear me talk about like um, like pop singers or like Not here. good movies or whatever. And I was just like, you know what? I have too much respect for Sebastian. Thank you. Then to come on here and be some fucking sorry, but pop culture parrot. Yes. I'm not just here to yap about what everyone wants from me, which is fucking pop culture stupid. I want to talk about real shit. Beautiful. And that's because I have a respect for you. Thank you. And that's why I said, you know what really want to makes want makes me want to pop off what? is mathematics. Oof. Math. The Oof. fact that we all had to be concerning ourselves with that yes all throughout our grade school experience not fair are you fucking kidding me it was torture <laughs> it was not applicable to my life okay i said from the beginning that i didn't enjoy it and they <laughs> kept giving it to me homework of math school work of math no way both report cards <gasps> that said bad indicated that I was stupid in regards to math. Were these which report cards? really was tough on my relationship with my parents that Jesus. they did that. That's not fair for you. That's not fair. You're not just... fair. It was should be illegal. I, I'm so sorry. I was this was this a public school or a private school that you went to? Oh, this was a public school. Jesus. And I'm Christ. saying I both that I went to. Oh. I wanna cause I want them to know how bad I feel. Cool. Tooker Avenue, I, I studied at this school until mm -hmm. third grade when I went, and that was in West Babylon, New York, and then I went to Islip School System and graduated from Islip High School, and that was in Islip, New York, and I want them to hear that I'm talking about them. They made us do math. It was Jesus. very bad. I, I'm happy that you're here to get this all off your chest because I know that there's a lot of listeners out here. We have a lot of kid listeners, so a big kid fan base, you know? Yeah. We're, we're 12 and under, <laughs> yeah. is, we're popping, okay? Yeah. And they need to uh -huh. hear from a mogul how much man sucks you know what i need to tell them what? it doesn't matter what they try to tell you about math and uh -huh. how you are in relation to math you can graduate from high school that's uh -huh. what i i want to tell them if you stay in the fight it doesn't matter how bad you are at math you can become a fully formed person <laughs> because what they tell you in school uh -huh. is that because you are bad at math your future is going to be worse they say, well, if your grade point average isn't up to here, you're not going to get in these specific classes and only kids in those classes get into this, get into that, get into college, etc. They terrify you, this stupid system that makes us think we need math. Jesus, Jesus. That Christ. our lives are going to be for the worse. Wow. And it's just not true. It's just not true. And it's torture. Matt, can I throw a wrench into this? You can try. I went to a math and science focused high school. Sebastian was really good at math. And, and I want to tell you something. You're actually proving my point, and I'm so excited. 100%. Exactly. 100% I'm proving your point right let, now. Let, 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 no, ahead, you are, ahead. and I'll tell you why. Go I'll ahead. tell you why. Because this is my plan for the kids going forward. And yes. this is just a policy proposal. It's obviously not happening. So I don't want people to get excited that I'm saying it on the podcast right now and then think it's the truth. Because there's a lot of rumors about things that I say that get out there. And then th the pr public perception just gets very skewed. We do a lot so of the DOE totally announcements. This is just... Okay. <laughs> All the DOE, they okay, come great. through us so... for the announcement. School, snow days, yada, yada. So please, this is not an official announcement. Yeah. Please, Matt, go ahead. 
No, just understand. What I think should be the situation is you start the kids off, everyone takes math in kindergarten. Then as people fall off as they go and start stop enjoying it or they they start to not get concepts, you you just knock them off. Like you don't take math anymore until there's like those five or six kids yes. that really liked math and were good at math and wanted to stick with it. And it's better for them too, because you can teach them more advanced stuff because they like it. So at the end of the school system, you have kids like you who are mm -hmm. like, I prefer to just go to a math and science school altogether. I don't want the fucking essay writing because I hate that. Mm -hmm. I say now we have kids that are slaying it and something they're passionate about because they don't have to split time all throughout the day to be able to do everything. Guess what, girl? You're going to grow up and you're not going to be able to do everything. No. Like you're not. And so what I would say is literally just split the kids off. They're okay. going to want to be with kids that they have the same shit in common with anyway. And so the fact that you went to a math and science school. I celebrate it. I think that's the way it should be. Yes, I love this. I, because you know what the saying? Jack of all trades, but they never tell you the, uh, the second part of that saying. Master of none. Master exactly. of none. That means that you're, you're Master bad. Master of none. That you're bad at everything. That you're okay at everything and great at nothing. Bitch, and also it, what it does is it like scares people away from pursuing their passions. And, it, it, what, and what it does too is is in a way, it lets sort of mediocre people rise to the top, I think, because they're just good at everything like a machine. Yes. It doesn't really have anything to say about like how well-rounded they are as a person. They just got best at like playing the game of school because yeah. after a while, school just feels like a fucking game. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I remember like being in the game and like it, it felt like, well, I could put all my time into doing school and like probably get a very competitive grade point average and I could do that. But also like I want to do at the time I wanted to do sports. If I was being honest with myself at the time, then I would yes. want to commit myself to arts and doing stuff like that. So I just think it's like sort of splitting everyone's attention in ways that. I don't think are ultimately super helpful. And for me, it was fucking math, which is hard and hell and painful. And I legit think uh -huh. made me get along less with my dad because wow. he was so mad that I could. Yeah, but he wow. was like, your grades aren't good. And I was like, I'm trying as hard as I can. I'm like literally not able to do math. And it set into motion like a parental relationship that was like adversarial because I was like so scared of math and I didn't want to disappoint my dad. And for some reason, math is like a dude thing. For some reason, it's the dude's part of learning, right? It's so, it's so masculine. Yes, because it, it's cold, hard numbers. It's emotionless. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's so true. And meanwhile, like I was really good at English and wrote like poetry and stuff. And I think my dad liked that I was good at it, but he wasn't like, let's see more of the poetry. The way you know these dads are at mathletes, like fucking spitting into their hands and giving <laughs> high fives and shit, and farting up in the whole cafeteria, fucking Always. screaming, fucking like all the nur all the like school nurses, like fucking the cafeteria ladies, just like it's a fucking bacchanal or over at these <laughs> math olympiads. It's it's wild. If you want to know it's what ancient Greece fest. was like, yes, you go to a math olympiad. You go it, to a math olympiad. Oh my god! Just like the men are acting, like it's just disgusting. It's disgusting. It's thank you, thank you. We need to shed light on this because everyone thinks it's all nerdum happening there. No, it's toxic masculinity at its, it's finest. Toxic masculinity at its, its finest. And and you know what? I did have some teachers that were female teaching me math confusing and now here's I'm, what I'll say. I'm confused now all of them i could tell just wanted to write poetry i knew it i knew it of course miss mcdonald she was my she was my sixth grade math teacher she got a real hard time she was younger she was just too emotional to teach math she wanted to write poetry and some of these men that try to teach math i see the soft side inside them and i'm like you can write a poem yeah. <laughs> I was you really good really at math can. and I'm so I almost double majored in it and I'm so happy I didn't because it's literally the most boring <laughs> thing that one could per I haven't taken math since high school Matt it has it's been can 10 years you, at this point 
but what I always your, think about what, that. What were your skills in high school? What were you good at? I, I want to know everything about you. <laughs> oh, my God, Matt. I was good at math. Matt, your opinion almost you really changed math. about math. Your opinion almost. <laughs> no. You told I mean, me what I can be convinced. <laughs> I can be convinced. I can be really interested in math, actually. <laughs> you pulled I can make it my number one thing. Yeah. I can make I mean, math it. my number one thing. <laughs> I know one plus one, Robbie. Mum, mum. <laughs> Baby, I have my uh, multiplications absolutely <laughs> memorized. We subtract ask Sebastian. Me any. We ask can me make anyone. This... Ask yeah. me, Go ahead. Ask me math. Uh, Robbie, ask four. me math. Six times four. Well, that would be 24. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a flirt. What's that do for you? <laughs> um, I don't know. In high school, what were, did you What did you pursue in high school outside of Well, I didn't. Well, I, well, poetry. I know about me. I don't. I, well, the, the, I didn't really <laughs> pursue poetry. I'm just saying, like that was something that was an element of what I was good at. Yes, I was good at like ri s writing essays and stuff. Like I, I kind of existed being the English kid. In fact, I got a five on the AP on all my AP English exams and a hundred on the Regents, which was the big New York State test. Wow. And I was the English. I won the English award at my school when I was a senior. So I was very good at that, but shit at math, and they threw me in the fucking trash. Wow. I think that's way more applicable in life is to be a good communicator, be able to understand what people are. Sa and I think about that all. I got a five on AP Calc. It is literally useless. I can't remember calculus, wow. but what I can do is <laughs> Shut up. read. Close things. your mouth, Matt. You're a gape right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally a gape right now because when you said you got a five on AP Calc, it's true. Like, you know how they say at Math Olympiads, guys are just like fucking. It's like a fuck fest. Yes. It's because, like, there is like a sexual energy when you say you got a five on AP Calc. Like, it does something primally to me. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. I could make math my number one thing. I could, I could tell. This is Did beautiful. you perform in high school? No, I was too scared because of being closeted. Um, it was like really something i wanted to do very badly um and i just was always too scared about what everyone would say because it was still it was hard at the time it I, was like 2000s um on long island and like long island is a blue state and, and all but it's very culturally long kind is. of conservative long in ways island, that they don't really get for reference the the highest number of medical professionals i think are not getting the vaccine on long island Beautiful fact. Yeah, Beautiful that, fact. my whole that fam, my whole fam, my mom's from Long Island, my whole family's from Long Island, so I, I know the Long Island vibe. Yeah, so you get it. I mean, it's just a lot of very stubborn people. They don't like to be told that their way is not the way, um, no. and that like what we were saying before, like it's not just a yes or no answer. It's like expanding on everything. Mm -hmm. The things that they can talk themselves into because they are such communicators is crazy. I mean, some of the craziest people in the world live there. <laughs> yes. And that, that being said, like there's a lot of love there. Like they feel everything hard. That's the thing about people from Long Island. And I think it's a cultural thing too with, you know, the types of people that live there demographically. It's a lot of Italians and a lot of Jews. So it's like they are they're very family oriented, very passionate. And like, it's just, it's interesting what happens when you combine like a dangerous um, misinformation with that type of com harsh communication. Like it's not good. It's not no, good. no. I mean, even. I did plays as a straight boy, and I felt, like, insecure about that, which is... You probably got called a faggot all the time, I would imagine. All the time, and I'll be honest, yeah. I was on the defensive with that shit, too. You know, it was no good. It was no good, and... But you did you yeah. did sports to combat that. I played football. I didn't like football. I played football just to, to be like, no, look, I see? And I would, like, hook up with the, yeah, the, of course. the dancer to be like, look, I'm good at plays, but that has nothing to do with who I am. But it does have exactly. to do. Yeah. Ugh. It, well, you know what I always think is I am never mad that I played sports in high school because I really enjoyed it. I was a different person then. I was focused on being able to control how good I was at something because I had something obviously about myself that I could not control. Yeah. Um, and honestly – it allowed me to do a sport which I knew would impress my father and let me culturally fit in without that sport being like, I felt like more than one people had person had to rely on me uh, or it was very physical. Like it was very physical, obviously. Like you push your body to a limit, like doing cross country running and track running, which is like, God bless. And I was very good. God bless. But, but you don't have to spar at all. The physical aspect is not <laughs> no, there. No sparring. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yes, but with, no hitting. I play basketball. I play basketball, and even that was too physical for me, and sure. it wasn't that physical. 
and I played baseball. I hung on to that. I was pretty good at that. But ultimately, what I liked about running tr tr track and cross country was it allowed me to compete uh, in an acceptable way socially at the time. And also, it felt individual. I have a question now about this cross country shit. Robbie told me the other day because he ran cross country. Oh my god, you two could go talk no, about it later. I okay. ran spring track. I ran spring track. Oh, spring track. Well, what spring track is the hottest one of the three? Yeah. <laughs> if I sense. tell you my yeah. times, you're gonna start to be like, all right, maybe he's not as hot. <laughs> Wait, why? What were your times? Like I know, I think I maybe <laughs> ran five minute mile and like a fifty six okay. second quarter. Like nothing crazy. My my best mile was a four thirty six. Yeah, you were. That's very fast. Robbie, hurry up. Bring up your fucking math scores again. Hurry up. You're losing them. You're losing them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm starting to see you less. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I swam. I was... Are you, you're fading away. <laughs> yeah. But so Robbie brings up this the point to me the other day. I had no idea this was a thing. Would you do yeah. pasta parties? Yeah. What oh, my God. And they were so misguided. You probably remember, Robbie. It was like you'd go the night before to, like, Applebee's, and you would, like, load up. Or sometimes some a kid would host it. And yeah, we would have a bunch of hosting. pasta. And we'd watch a movie. Yeah, so w we would either do one of the two. If it was an unofficial pasta party, it'd be, like, me and my friends at Applebee's, like, ch ordering, like, chicken panne pasta. Fucking oh, not what you needed to get. <laughs> I, one time my friend yeah. Lorian ordered steak towers. <laughs> one time my friend Lorian ordered steak towers. Hours. And the next day off the track, on the on the course, she like uh -huh. passed out, and they had to go out in the go kart and find her. And I remember her <laughs> driving past in the go kart, being slurring, "I'm okay," <laughs> like because she ate the steak towers at Applebee's the night before. But wow. anyway, it was either that or one kid would have like a huge party where the whole team would come in there, just be gallons of pasta made and we wa we'd watch a movie we'd watch like because it was cross country we are, we'd do like without limits or uh prefontaine which are the movies about steve prefontaine which he's like an amazing cross country runner and there's been movies made about him with billy crudup and jared leto so that was like a typical pasta party night wow yeah i never got invited to any of these pasta parties <laughs> if i would have known about well, football them, is like different yes we would have we would drink beers after after the game it was like we were for sure yeah because it was sad yeah. in high school it was saturday games or like friday night games or saturday games so then we would have like a, a party we would never i mean we would slam pizza before i remember a lot of times throwing up because me and my friends would each eat a whole pizza pie and then we would go okay yeah. let's go to practice well the thing is like it, it, it doesn't really matter that looking back what we were eating was no. not what we thought like and what we were good what was good for us was not what we thought because honestly at that age your body can take so much now it's like I'll I'll eat a handful of McDonald's fries and my body is like screaming at me for hours like why did you do that <laughs> like what's wrong with you yes and like I, you need us I used to abuse the body, and the body wouldn't even react. Oh. It'd be like, yo, what's good? <laughs> It'd be like, I'd eat a whole like, pizza and you're solid as a rock, yes. and you'd just be eating whatever the fuck, and now it's just like, whatever. But yeah, the, the culture around, like, you describing, like, crushing beers after the football game just reminds me of, like, going to games in high school, and, like, you would drink your hater. You probably would, didn't because you were playing, but mm -hmm. to go be a spectator at, like, high school football games, I'd be drinking my, like, haterade, my, like, red Gatorade with vodka mixed in. Yes! Like, that <laughs> culture like freezing cold like wondering who's gonna kiss who like <laughs> that like horny mm -hmm. soft like not soft like fucking bleacher nonsense crazy oh but you know what the football i will say this unlike math leagues there was a lot of emotions in these sports <laughs> Unlike, oh yeah that's the only place i would see my friends that were snorting coke and doing pills the only place i would ever see them cry is in the locker room in after high a game. school matt matt i was a, i was a bad, bad, bad boy a, bad, bad, bad boy. You fucking animal <laughs> but doing coke and doing pills in high school matt why are you judging <laughs> I, don't, I just got into that last night I, I, <laughs> phenomenal right <laughs> Phenomenal. They're all they're wrapped up to. I only heard about this stuff this week. I know. I know. Hey, please, slow and steady wins the race, okay, man? Okay. I know. This is why oh, we God, started this whole that. conversation with pasta parties. I just watched Euphoria and I was like, I didn't, my parties weren't like this in high school. And Sebastian was like, oh no, that, that was very much my high school experience. That's insane. Yeah, thanks. I think that's the biggest difference between Stat. I mean, in some places in Long Island, but Staten Island is a bigger, like, drug culture 
Yeah, definitely like better. I mean, not better, but closer proximity to the the city, which mm-hmm. Manhattan is Manhattan. Yes, that, but it, you know what's crazy? Like, truly, I for some reason growing up on Long Island, it was very much alcohol driven. I didn't even really smoke weed until I was in college at all, and now it's just it's it's so funny to look back because at the time when I went to NYU, there was a lot of kids from California and from different parts of the country and even kids from the Midwest who had this like vocabulary for weed. And I was like, how did that happen? And I remember just thinking in high school, I just thought of weed as such a burnout drug. Like mm-hmm. you were such a low life if you smoked it that when I got to college and like it got culturally reassessed for me, I was like, oh, never mind. This is great. And then I became one of the biggest stoners on the in the eastern seaboard. <laughs> Thank you. And I wish I had done it in high school because I could have chilled out so much more in like classes that were nonsense, oh, like math. I used to, I used to love getting high before classes, I and mean, I used to get high before. I, I, I st- wish I studied engineering in college for a little bit too, Matt. So I was a man. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, oh. how could you be a stoner? Can you, when you are smoking, can you do math? Yeah, I think I could because it's all puzzles. I one time, I'll tell you, this is this was the worst of it. I one time took See, acid. See, I hate puzzles. That's, that's, that's why you don't like math. I one time took acid, and I was up all night long tripping balls. And then I, I, I you know how if – you may not know. I'm not I'm never going to paint this on you, but if you do take a hallucinogens, you reevaluate your life. Oh, I've many times. It's so interesting you say this because the last – the first time I ever did, we did a puzzle. Oh, interesting. And did you enjoy it? And I was like – well, I was literally very open for the experience. So uh-huh. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do the puzzle. You know what I mean? I was like, people that I like enjoy it. There must be something to it. I'm tripping. I'm going to sit down and do the puzzle. That's beautiful. I think I could describe my role in the puzzle making as much more of a helper. Certainly not the <laughs> director of what was happening you... because that's never going to be me. But no, I did enjoy no. the experience because guess what? We, we completed the puzzle. That's what it's about. It's figuring out the math problem. So I took acid and I went to my yeah. math class. And for some reason, we had to move from one class to another. And, and I, I mm-hmm. said to my friend, uh, there's like in engineering classes, there would be like eight people in the class. And I turned to my friend and they're like, OK, we have to move to another classroom. I turned to my friend. I go, I took acid. I'm so fucking high right now. And my boy turns <laughs> to me and he goes, you just screamed that in the middle of class. <laughs> The thing is, it's such a crazy thing to have happened that you could literally have just told the teacher, I was kidding, and she'd have been like, oh, okay. Uh, because I can't believe that that was even possible that you did acid <laughs> at school. Yes. Well, I did it, and it just was still happening. And you know what I love about math? The teacher looked at me, what? laughed, and then we just continued doing math. We just continued doing math because math does not care. Math is because a party. you know what? Math doesn't care. Math. And also the teacher, the teacher was probably like, I could choose to engage with this as a reality right now mm-hmm. and have that be the rest of my day and probably week. Yes. Or I can just accept that it's fine, release my control, be a cool ass person and let this kid continue with his life. Because if they had found out that you did acid in high school, you'd have been a juvie boy. <laughs> Wait, you'd this was college. Boy. This was freshman year of college. Oh, okay, college. Still. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Still no good. Still. Then prison, prison time. Please don't. Oh, please. I'm so scared of prison. Please. My they fucking cops. One of the most terrifying. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I have a hot take right now. Hot take. Very scared of prison. Hot take. Well, I'm a scared of prison. I'm a scared. I'm so scared of prison, too, girl. I want you to know I'm holding your hand right now. I, too. I share this fear. Thank you. And I'm sure Robbie's very scared of prison. (laughs) Yeah, I would prefer (laughs) never to go to prison. Yeah. Wow. Probably probably best you don't. Yeah. (laughs) You cute motherfucker. (laughs) Probably best you stay out of there. You know he used to shave his whole body when he would swim. Yeah, once yeah, a year okay. at a pasta party. He would have shaving parties. <laughs> a pasta party, and then for before like the counties, we would yeah, we would have to do that. You know, swimming. I so so would your boys like help shave you? Yeah, well, like the girls would do the boys, and the boys would do the girls. We for we would sure. have the wow. Like a co ed team. Wow. Okay. So, like, it was kind of like a horny thing. Yeah. Like, swimming was a, a horny place. Other. Yes. Swimming All right. Was cool. a horny place. That's one of the best stories I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> was there, was the, the track team, was there a um, drama? I wish it got hornier. I no. got to say, I, I, uh, there was some, some drama every now and then, but 
you know, I was so on the outside of it, but I will tell you this. We actually did not have a boys winter track team at my high school. So I would run and practice all, all season. I was the only boy that was like practicing with the girls track team. I would go to girls track practice every single day. The coach allowed it and I would run with them. And so I did like sort of get my life as like a gay guy who was able to like be around all these girls uh -huh. for a reason. And they, they, we would all do like girl talk pretty much. Like I, I got that ex exercise, that part of my personality with them. Yeah. And they never really were like, are you gay or whatever? They kind of were just like, I kind of just, fit in now i think looking back it's like if we were to all look at the situation like it's obvious that's the one gay kid <laughs> but yes. at the time i really didn't get that and also like i got to make good friends that way because those team experiences are important and i just so happen to like be able to do that with the girls and i bonded with the girls track runners so much more than ever with the boys because it was just so interesting what the two groups wanted to talk about like the guys were always talking about how horny they were and like <laughs> At being better than each other and like it was such like whatever how much they drank that weekend or whatever it's not fun everything's girls, a competition with boys everything's a competition no, and, right and the, and it's just more basic like in terms of like what can be spoken about whereas mm -hmm. the girls were like having complex relationship dynamics and like interesting things were happening and i was just like wow it's really true girls are just more mature than boys like and that it was an interesting thing i got to sort of experience yeah, that was one of the benefits of doing musical theater. Also, I got to hang out with boys and girls. It wasn't I like, yes, I had actual friends that were just female, which in high school in Staten Island was not common. It was not yeah, like a totally. normal thing. It was like anytime, even like I remember my dad, I would like hang out, go, with, oh, this my friend's coming over and everyone would just implies something's happening. Everyone because yeah. and I was I'm a man raised by a woman. You know, and I have two sisters. Yep. Uh, that actually is more of my comfort zone than hanging around with 100%. dudes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And you'll notice that, like, it, it's. I think it's definitely true that that sort of, um, like, segregation is the is the wrong word, but like the 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 separating of boys and girls. Like, y'all walk in this line, y'all walk in that line. The like gendering of this experience that is school, I think, does show up when people reach of age like i just can't believe the way that i see men treat women on long island i just i cannot believe it i it's went wild. back what it's crazy and i went yeah. back one year to rockville center to do new year's eve um with my friends from high school i for some reason i wasn't spending it in manhattan with, like me and all my friends from high school were gonna go do it together i'm gonna say we were like 22 23 interesting and we were in rockville center and i was with like you know everyone guys girls evenly splits on the middle and i didn't ever hang out with any disrespectful guys like the guys i was with thought this was crazy too but at this new year's eve party like it's like you know like a with a big cover like 90 dollar cover like you come mm -hmm. in like you drink like drink tickets all that it was very like a bridge and tunnel sure. new year's eve party you have your the way ed hardy dress shirt would, on yeah <laughs> very that, that one. i've been to that one khakis as far as the eye can see of course that's and, nice jeans khakis are nice jeans exactly the nice clothes nice nice, nice clothes. you dressed up the yes. H so, blazer 100 percent. i remember yes. at one point and, in time i was told by a girl i need to get rid of all my shiny shirts because i would wear khakis <laughs> and shiny shirts oh please anything with this anything that's striped from marshall's my mother put it in my closet <laughs> yes. um so basically like the way that these men were with like shark eyes, like black in the eyes, drunk, like disassociated, mm -hmm. touching women, throwing women around, dancing with women, like trying to shove their like throats, f fingers everywhere. Like it yeah. was just so wild to watch. And I had been in Manhattan then for like three or four years. And I guess maybe I had either forgotten or hadn't seen it ever. Like maybe I was just out of sight, out of mind about the whole thing. I just accepted it as the reality. But having been away and then coming back and seeing the way that men were treating women, I was like, there is a serious problem here. There is a real issue yes. with the way that casual misogyny and just like violence towards women is normalized. Because I'm telling you, women be getting dragged around, like thrown into cars, like they're drunk and none of the women know they're like in prison by this there. Or if they do, they like have been cultured to put up with it. Like 
there was no one being like, guys, like everyone stop. Like, this is crazy. And this was 2000, like 13, 14 that I was witnessing it. Mm -hmm. And I know that since then there's been a lot of like, you know, a lot more voices that have been like, this is unacceptable. We have to change the way this is. This is like post me too movement now. And like post the normalization of Trump being coming president. And like, we had to really reconcile with like that kind of violent language and violent action towards women. Cause it was getting so normalized that he was the president. Yes. A hundred percent. Like, I think now maybe I hope it's different, but I'm not hopeful because of how seeped into the culture it was. I think that there is. I'm back in Staten Island, Matt. So I'm like around the people. You're there. I'm around yeah. the people. There is. I think there is pushback even from some women. That's like I'm an old school type of woman. Even yeah, now. traditional. That's the, what they say. The traditional. Yes. And even there is like such. I think anger in all these people's hearts, or like they were told they couldn't be who they want to be freely. Right. They're very repressed. Yes. So I'll be walking. I I'll, I could be driving down the streets and my neighbors will stare at me. A neighbor I know, like, what the fuck are you doing driving out of your house? I'm like, that's none of your business. They're looking at me like yeah. I'm doing something wrong. There is busy body culture is big there too. Busy, but everyone wants to know what's going on. Every my mom has yeah. a, my mom has a theory about every neighbor, every neighbor. She, she yeah, has, I, love, I love theories, theories. Theories. theories like not based in fact but just like a theory like you know i think that the mm -hmm. reason they moved is because the daughter was a lesbian i think yeah. that's the reason. <laughs> you know she got that shorter haircut you know she got mm -hmm. that shorter haircut and i think that they were very embarrassed and you know obviously maybe i don't know what's going on with their money but the daughter was a lesbian so i think maybe that's why they moved I do. it affected the money they had to move up to Port Richmond. Not as nice. Not you as know, nice. He lost his job because she was a lesbian. You're like, Mom, no, <laughs> that's, that's not. Yeah, he, his daughter was lesbian. I don't. I don't think he. I don't think he. He kept his job after that. That's why no, he, he be very he, careful. He told my mom the does boss. not think this, <laughs> by the way. Him. But it's just like this. <laughs> we this kind about of this. woman who's just talking. Uh huh. A hundred percent. Yes. And my mom will be like, you know, Danielle. She got a breast implant. Next thing you know, husband <laughs> left her. What is that about? You think that's what he wanted? <laughs> like this, and I would be like ten years old, be like, okay, ma, you know, this was well, my you life. Know, you know, you know, Michelle doesn't babysit for them anymore because Deborah told me she thinks Michelle tried to steal the cat. No. She thinks Michelle tried to steal the cat. And I thought so she was you, allergic to cats. Well, that's what she had said, which is I think she tried to throw her off the scent. Tricky, tricky, but, tricky, know, tricky, so to tricky. speak, so to speak. So beautiful. So don't get me yeah, started, so, you know. So they fired her. They got a new girl. They got a new girl. Oh, Hopefully she doesn't try to steal the cat. Please, the please. Do you I don't think trust the it. pandemic has heightened this or it's Heightens. subsided. Heightened. Oh, come Heightens, on. It's, bro. It's, it's, well, because people the can't do anything. Is, well, no. people aren't going to school anymore. This is what me and Yeah, <laughs> no. but that gets them people, stir crazy and they have and social they, media. Never yeah. forget that. <laughs> yes. I guess you're right. Have you Never heard of the term that. FLID, Matt? No, what is FLID? Fucking Long Island douchebag. And it is like well, uh, something sure. that they, <laughs> they're like these types that you were just describing in Rockville Center. They like, I guess this I just now. use the proper words. I yeah, don't do yeah, the brief. Yeah. I would just well, say this is, Long Island douchebag. No, I know. <laughs> the oh, my friend told they're me like it claiming exists. it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think, yeah, they like want Like, this. yo, I'm yeah. a FLID dude. Yes, Why do exactly. I fucking care? Wow. So oh, I didn't, Sebastian my friend has me. told me that this exists. But yeah. It does live with the thing that is now. I always talk about the devil inside of me that I'm fighting, you know, and that is oh, it, deeply. I, it's the devil is the, is the where I'm from. It's the devil wasn't inside of me when I was born. No, but it, I mean, but we were that's it's the nurture or n nature debate. And this is an argument for nurture that your environment does create you like whenever anyone is trying to start with me, it takes me everything in me. To yeah. not be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes. Like, it's just like, like, I just want to come out with it so hard or be like, fuck off. Like, you are so fucking annoying. Like, uh -huh. like you could. And, and also how normalized it was. And this is bad. How normalized it was when I was in high school. And I'm sure you said you both said this. I said this. Yeah. But the word faggot yeah. would fly off my mouth. It was part of the vernacular. Mm -hmm. And now looking back, I'm like, that is so crazy and you know who i blame i know who you blame oh, i think i've i think i've talked to you about this you've before. told me about but, uh, but it makes sense eminem a hundred percent because he was Eminem. the biggest rapper alive and he was the most homophobic person out there 
he was the, not only the biggest rapper alive, but he was the biggest pop star. Yes. They were playing him on pop radio. I mean, he was as big or bigger than Britney Spears. He was That's on Z100. He was Z100. able to feud with all those people. Oh, yeah. Z100 would pump him. BLI was our station. They would blast Eminem. It was all the time. I probably know every word to cleaning out my closet. A song that uses the word faggot in a derogatory mm -hmm. way. Like, so many things. And it's crazy because... I was working years later. I hadn't heard this song in such a long time. And I was working at an Irish bar. I was probably 25 years old. And it was late at night. We were cleaning up. And cleaning on my closet came out. I was like, bum, 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 bum. And I was like, oh, this shit, this song. Like, I remember this song. And he's, I'm sorry, mama. And doing the whole thing. And I'm like, this is kind of a bop. And then he says, my fucking faggot father. And I'm like, oh. And it, it just cut sure. me to my core because it came out of nowhere. But it triggered me. And I hate to say that. But yeah. it did take me back to like whoa that part of my life that was like i remember the pain of Oof. hearing people say that all the time and i was like this is such an interesting moment because it's an examination of a piece of culture that was ingrained in me that literally carries a harmful emotion and i was like people don't even know that this is fucked up you know what I'm. You know what I'm saying. At, at so the time, to think about now. At the time, no one was thinking that. I even wonder if they no. they bleeped it on the radio. I wonder if they bleeped well, that word like on the radio. This was like obviously from someone's playlist because it, I heard it. A hundred percent. So it was obviously like on someone's like Spotify playlist or something. But I don't. They did not bleep it at the time. Back in the day, they could not have, and they would bleep ass. They would bleep like a butt butt crack. Oh yeah. A and they couldn't By have. By the way. Another thing about Eminem is he had that song "Ass Like That," yeah. and then he he um remember that tune? Mm -hmm. And he had Hillary Duff in it. Hillary Duff is Marshall Young for me, saw. I ain't never seen a butt like that. <laughs> yeah, you're still talking sexually about a young underage girl, you fucking Cadet creep. Kelly. Like, like, what what like what did you think? Because you didn't say ass, we thought you didn't. You didn't. That didn't mean you wanted to fuck her. Like, the next shut line up. Was, Maybe next year I'll say ass and she'll make my slinky go. Girl, yeah. Like at the time, at the current time, she's underage, yeah, yeah. so maybe you need to get yeah. a court date. Yeah. Fucking creep. I really hate that guy. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't say that do. word, but I would say I would call everything gay. It was like everything yeah. was gay. Homework was. It was so. I'm like, I look yeah. back at it. I'm just like, what? Everything. I don't even know what it, it was. Positive sometimes. It was negative sometimes. Yeah. It was such a weird. No, I think that it just of... existed. It became its like own word, where it's like it yeah. meant. It meant like it, you hated it. Like it was stupid. Literally, it just was like that's gay. It's like sure. a more edgy way to say something is stupid. Yeah, that's and so wild. That was something I. I, I yeah. re remember when I thank God I got involved with the arts because that's fucking broke all that shit out of me. Thank God. I, 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 I like yeah. the person I could have been. I, I see these people at the grocery store fucking monsters with their fucking Trump Trump masks on their chin. You know, like it's I, so crazy. And that the fact that that is such a part of it, like that Trump is so he's so popular on Long Island. I mean, I it's so crazy. popular. I I recently, it, it's so crazy. And Staten Island, obviously, but like. Yeah. You really forget how out of touch it all is until so you go back. I was actually at, at one point in the summer when the pandemic was like taking its little break there for a second. I did make it back hiatus. to Long Island. Okay. It was the break was on a hiatus. Uh -huh, a little sabbatical um, for the, for the Corona. Okay. It was nice. It did some, right, it did some right. research. It came back with a bunch of variants. Okay. It did a yeah. sabbatical. Came back. And it came back I like you'd never seen it before. <laughs> yes. And a new woman. Um, but like. I remember I was back there over the summer and I went out to an outdoor restaurant with my parents. And obviously mm -hmm. this is the summer, so it was prior to the election. And this was pretty much right after um, the George Floyd protests were starting and Black Lives Matter was like on everyone's mind because it needed to be. Yeah. And it was after the protests. And it's just so interesting because I was there after they had received all this bullshit about how the protests were violent and the protesters were violent and the, the, how how horrible it was that the businesses were being um, ripped down or whatever and the starting of the fires and etc. And they completely were just missing the fact that the reason there were protests is because black people are being systemically murdered in, in, 
in our country mm-hmm. and um the, their police system is corrupt and like so they completely just didn't even think about that and skipped right to that and i went out to dinner with my parents and um like a seafood restaurant on the water beautiful and at least a like, nice setting. like Oh my God. And I'd still die for that. And this is what's such a bummer about it is like, I do love that setting. And then this energy happened. The owner of the restaurant, I guess, gets on the mic and he's like, all right, as you guys all know, it's Patriot night. It's Monday. That means it's Patriot night here at such and such. (laughs) And um, I just, I really wanted to take a minute to say that um, what we got going on in our country is absolutely ridiculous. And he didn't get explicitly political about anything, but he did say, mm-hmm. and I think that we all know what I'm talking about. And I, you look out in the harbor and there's huge Trump flags. And yes. it's so clear that they have been fed and fully believe something that is the opposite of the truth and are just completely disregarding the real issues in the country in regards to racism and like police brutality. And then he was like, and so, you know, my daughter, Amanda, is going to get up here. She's the head waitress, and she's going to sing. Of course, of the course. National anthem. Oh, the National Anthem. Of and course. And so they give her the mic. <laughs> they give her the mic that barely works. I'm telling you, uh-huh. it's just feedback city, crackle city. You can barely hear it. Oh, my and God. And she sings in her fucking legit voice the least powerful anthem, most self-conscious bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Oh. And then... Everyone in the restaurant is like, that was beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. She's got Phenomenal, a Phenomenal, sweetheart. Voice. Sweetheart, Absolutely come here. Come beautiful. here. Beautiful. Ever a picture of her and cheeks the girls with COVID happening? Are like, She's a gorgeous girl. She's a gorgeous girl. This girl's stunning, gorgeous. She's literally a t- four out of 10 with no <laughs> voice. And I'm like, I, I, and for some reason, I turned to my parents and I was like, I mean, you know, we have to leave. And she was like, yeah, my mom was like, yeah, I really wanted to get dessert, but I can't sit here for another second because my immediate family is like, yeah. good. We're on the right side. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're getting our shit to leave. And by the way, people are starting to crowd at the bar with no fucking masks. Of course. And this guy comes over and like pretends he's going to sit at our table. And we were like, Dude, get away. Like, this is literally a super (laughs) spreader event. So it's just like flagrant disregard for the pandemic and the craziest display of like limp dick patriotism. Yes. Like people that are obviously delusional and lying to themselves I've ever seen. And we left and I was like so sad and I felt so um, like dispirited about how the election was going to turn out because I was like, it just makes me feel like, how do you how do you get through to people le- that have um, culturally gotten to this place? I, I, mean, I just it was it's shocking to me it all turned out the way it did. You know what it is now every everyone's teacher, everyone's aunts from Long Island, Staten Island, they just run Facebook. That's what it is. They're just a yeah. No one loves Facebook yeah. more than literally the mother of the daughter that sang. She's on it every day. She's on the messenger. She's looking at likes. She's sharing. She was posting photos. Yeah, she's still. Yeah, it's 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 so true that that is definitely a medium that was ruined by propaganda. Yes, and it's just so obvious. And he should go to jail or like obviously lose that company. But it's just so crazy. Like, it should have been obvious all along that that could happen. Um. But it feels like it came out of nowhere, and now it's just too late. That like that platform is just. I think it would be better if it didn't exist. Sometimes I really do think it would be better if Twitter just didn't exist. And I say that as someone who like is addicted to it and on it every day. Like uh-huh. social media really has allowed the spread of misinformation. And honestly, we made a joke about it up top, but propaganda yes. that has poisoned yes. so many people's minds. And I wonder how we can get a hold on it. You know what I mean? Because it's just, it's created culture. It's almost as it is sad right when you go back and you're like, these people have no, they see this and they believe it. I mean, yeah, I had family members that were posting pictures of my neighborhood. I was living in the city the whole time. And it's just like, you don't even call me and ask me, you know, that I, you text me, oh, I love you. I miss you. I hope you're being, sa-. nobody gives a shit about, it was sad to see it's, people fall for like everything that comes out of Tucker Carlson's mouth, you just will believe. <laughs> Did you know that he has been consistently ranked one of the sexiest conservative men? What? Women are like horny. For I know. Him. On top of it all, I they know. really are horny for Tucker. Wild. Is it the hair? It's, what is it that makes him? Uh, uh, I think, remove the politics. We need to figure out what's hot about Tucker Carlson. Because his hair is you know nice. What? He looks like 
I'll tell you what he looks like. Okay. He looks like the, a leading man of a soap opera that wasn't the hot guy. He was like the good husband. Okay, he, okay. This guy looks a lot, and I'm gonna get really specific here, but he looks a lot like this guy who was on All My Children. He played the character of Tad on All My Children. And I remember- Beautiful, like, it's right in This guy Robin looks Eyes exactly wheelhouse. like Tupper, Tucker Carlson. I'm telling you, and I knew you would never get that. Uh, of but course, of course. This, this, this is why I say it makes sense to me that he's sexually attractive to them because it's something about his like white bread, average enough thing that reminds him of a husband that reminds them of a husband that they listen to him and also he's like a little pissed off in a way that's i guess kind of hot and he probably tells them what their husbands are also saying and so safe it feels they feel safe yes 100 percent safe and uh, and also he has like a smugness about him that makes you think he's better than he, he like acts like i'm better than the audience a little bit yeah and also women love to women from new york love to argue and yes. so I did not say it. Matt said it. I did not say, say it. it. <laughs> Please, Matt, you're not out here in the dating pool. <laughs> I'll 100% say it. Can I, can I say it's something so sick? true. Matt, I love a woman what? that argues. That's I love. I I'm love, sure you do. I, that's, that's what your culture is. What would you do if someone was like a wilting flower? Like, what would you talk about? I want a strong nothing. I want a strong. I want a woman that's going to tell me where this we're going here. Come on. Don't be a fucking idiot. That's, and uh, you deserve that. I really want that for you. I really want that for me too. <laughs> I really want see, that. See, that's see the the reason I don't want that is because that's me. <laughs> I am that woman. Like I am the one that's like I want you to sit there. Like I recently looked at a video of my boy, my ex boyfriend used uh -huh. to put me on tape for auditions. Nice. And I was looking back at some of the old things, and sometimes the camera would be rolling, and I was like, No, you need to put the camera there. Sit there. <laughs> Don't go over there. We need to do it now. No. Now, Jared, please. I don't want you to do it like that. Do it like this. And then he gives me one note, and I'm like, well, I thought I was doing that. I'm oh like, my God. and I'm looking at myself and being like, oh my God. Oh my God. You are an annoying bitch. Wow. And you know what? I had I, one of my exes, she would take videos and she would help me with self tapes. And you know what she would be saying? She goes, well, I'm not going to fucking do this unless you think that you're funny. She would be saying shit like that to me. <laughs> she would. So it's, we are both getting what we, I am getting you on the other side of the camera. She goes, well, honestly, she'll go, well, yeah. I'll fucking wait till you want to have a little fun with this script. Okay. And then I'll come back. You tell me when you're fucking ready. And then she'll Obsessed. walk away and my dick would be hard as a rock, man. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> you just like need that dominance in your life. I mean, sometimes people that take charge, they need a dominator. I love that. I, I want, all I want is a woman like you, Matt. And all you want is a boy like Robbie. <laughs> And that's really, unfortunately, the way this love triangle is going to work. I was just going to ask you, Robbie, are you dating? Uh, no, I'm alone. Out You're of not? Coconuts. You're single? No, I'm single, yeah. I've been single for five years. <laughs> what? I don't understand. He's a little caught up the on the X. Is? He's caught up on the X. He, he, it's, oh, I gotcha. He, but five years is a I long gotcha. time. Five years is a long time, Matt. I needed to transfer. Uh, it's a long I needed time. To, to sometimes transfer. you needed, you needed to heal. Yeah, there, that environment that you guys talk about i grew up into and you need to like uh, unlearn a lot of that before you get back out in the world i think that's really great i think that's like very responsible yeah. and honestly so yes. fucking hot <laughs> robbie's good robbie's out know. here i'm you're pushing a, you're robbie. obviously a 10 i'm pushing yeah, you, robbie you should be pushing robbie in direction robbie's good for you robbie is good for the show I... i'll say that having <sighs> having this like big fish that people want to catch mm -hmm. huge uh, matt you're the vanna white Matt, I 100% know. I picked him for his ass, okay? I 100% picked him. He goes, I'll record for you. I'll go, beautiful. I, I go, let me see your biceps. And he, and he's fucking, he's got me doing workouts with him, yada, yada. We Who was your other friend that you had that was a gorgeous man? Anthony? And I, You know what? Anthony. Yes, my friend, my buddy, Anthony Sneed. He was gorgeous, oh, too. Oh, my God. He <laughs> was a beautiful man. Where is he? Uh, he's around. He's around. You want me to, you yeah? want me to connect Ooh. you to him? I can't believe you no, remember he, his No, he's name. literally – but but here's – oh, yeah, I remember Anthony. He was yeah. so hot. <laughs> I remember, remember when we did that strip show together? Remember when we all were strippers for Josh and Aaron? Oh, yeah. Did he strip with me? He stripped. Oh, my God. That's all you remember. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Yeah, for some reason, Matt, hot, really, really hot guys love hanging out with me. 
Well, I mean, that's why that's I mean, that's why I want to hang out with you too. More. <laughs> no, I, here's no. the thing. It's like I, I'm so I'm so I'm so. I believe so much that all these guys are so confident in themselves that I can flirt with them all the doodah day, and I feel like they're like, ah, whatever. I, I Whereas think... guys that are actually gay, mm -hmm. I get so scared to vote to flirt with guys I like. Sure, sure, I get that. I get that. It's it's like I, actually, there's no male equivalent because flirting with women is always pretty scary. To be honest with you. <laughs> well, women are very scary, especially the ones that you're looking for. The ones I'm looking for yeah. are, are terrifying. Okay, <laughs> okay, but hey. DM me. If you want to DM me and yell at me, uh, come hit me up, okay? <laughs> That's because the conversation could end in death. Yes, and I love that. If you that. say the wrong thing, you could lose your life. I love that. But you know what I love about Robbie and hot boys like Anthony? Th what? They like me. And it makes me feel like the hottest prince in the whole fucking land, okay? Well, you are the king. You really are the king. And they were treating you like the king at that strip show. And I was like, it's because it's true. You know you're the king. Well, hot when hot boys like uh, there's a part of me that I can recognize when a kid's hot, and when they're into me, uh -huh. there's a part of me, me as just a a straight boy that's like I'm about this. I'm about this really cute boy liking me. Yeah, a hundred percent. Look, and that actually is that's in. Okay, so just to illustrate this point. Okay. Do you remember being like a little boy, mm -hmm. like when you were in elementary school, and with your friends? You'd like lay in each other's laps or yes. like hang on each other or like boys were much more playful, like doing story pirates. Mm -hmm. we, Sebastian and I, in fact, we, I did my very first story pirates show with you. Oh, interesting. So when we go back to the schools to perform for the kids, something I was observing is the little boys were very affectionate with each other. And it kind of took me back to being that way with my friends. Like yeah, I yeah. remember even like little boys like kissing each other stuff innocently, just like affectionately, just like the level of affection was higher. Then at some point you learn that being gay is bad and men don't act like that. And like, you know, it, it, it's like the sensitivity chip gets taken away and you're not supposed to do that. And I think that's what makes boys like so repressed. So some, any straight man that's like comfortable enough in their sexuality to not think about it if he's gonna come give me a hug or say, I like this shirt or like you look adorable or like whatever, or like just yeah. like that kind of stuff. I am here for yes. like and it never it, it's just like the difference between someone that is repressed from someone that is comfortable with themselves is like just leagues and bounds like i feel like i can relate to someone i just can't relate to that energy of like that like toxic patriarchy kind of thing because i grew up around it and i know it's bad a hundred percent a hundred percent and you know where it's the worst matt Staten Where? Island and Long Island. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Well, the thing is, like, it's also bad in the South for other reasons, and like the Midwest. Yeah, you know, yeah, the South there's is a lot of bad. repression. And, yes, but but the fact of the matter is, and it is a it is a completely cultural issue. But we're able to obviously speak to our region and say confirmed. It's definitely a huge problem. Huge problem. Yes, yes, and you know what? You know where it's even worse in Staten Island, Long Island. At where? fucking Math Olympiads, bro. Okay, that's where the shit is oh, being Math thrown Olympiads. down. <laughs> it's really just too much. And and here's the thing. Uh huh. Do you know how complicated math gets? You do. So you you I do. you like got a little boner when you thought of trigonometry. Mm hmm. So Katoa, bro. You don't gotta talk to me about that so, shit. Okay. Oh, I I literally just <laughs> I almost threw up at Sokatoa. You, you got Ajita from a Sokatoa. Sokatoa. S O H. Uh huh. C A H T O A. Yes. So Katoa. That's oh beautiful. You yeah, crushed I remember it, man. because I was forced to. <laughs> <laughs> this I was, was forced to have to know this shit. Well, I, I mean, wait, is there? Can you think of one good example that you use math for now? You know what? When I'm adding up all the checks that I cash <laughs> to find out how much money I have from my career in the arts. <laughs> That's when I'm thankful that I have the ability to do addition because, darling dear, the numbers are getting added every day. Oof. The checks piling up. Beautiful. Because of my career in the arts, no math included. You should make a huge donation to, to a math department to shut it down. You should, make, you should go to- I should say, here's money. Leave. Yes. Leave town. I'll pay the you math know what teacher I'm gonna to do? not teach. 
This is, I'm literally, I'm not even kidding you. This is I want to start a scholarship at my high school, uh -huh. which is $1,000 to the person that has the lowest math scores. Beautiful. I want the worst Beautiful. math student to get $1,000. I'm not kidding. You have to do this. And they should compete for it. You have I think to, I'm going to yeah. do it. I'm going to contact. I'm going to be like, for the worst math student in the class, mm -hmm. they get the Matt Rogers, it doesn't matter scholarship. <laughs> and this is a public high school giving money to the kids. This is the, well. Let yes. me know when it happens. We make our official announcements of a DOE over here. So you just let us know, and I'll make sure that we make that announcement. Yeah, and I'm happy to sort of just be able to say that, so that there's not rumors, because a lot of times I things know. that I say I and know. promises that I make, quote unquote, yes, get extrapolated in the media, and I just really just want to get right out ahead. So thank you so much for giving me the platform to of do that. Of course, today was a platform for you, Matt. Today, tonight, was all about you taking all these rumors, pushing them out the window, okay? Speaking your truth. The fact that I got to speak my truth and yes. clear the air, one. Thank God. Two, hang out with you. Beautiful. And three, either re-meet or meet for the first time, Robbie. This <laughs> I will a say, huge... Sebastian was like, I don't know if you should, but two years ago, we were both okay. at Sundance. Okay, here we <laughs> This is it. We were both at Sundance? Yes. I was at Sundance, and somebody was like, oh, Matt Rogers is at Sundance, and I remember that we were both at Sundance. <laughs> Wait, what were you doing at Sundance? I was skiing and just part going to parties at night. Oh, for sure. Okay, okay, amazing. Uh, I wasn't that's... working at Sundance, but you were I remember and like I yeah uploaded from Sundance, and somebody was like, "Oh my God, Matt Rogers is at Sundance," and I was like, I barely knew who you were, and I was like, "Okay," and I like looked up who you were, and I was like, "Oh yeah, he, this man is at Sundance." Oh, uh, that's all you thought when you looked me up? <laughs> no, I think you're very funny. I'm. A <laughs> Robbie, come on. Well, Honey, can I say something? I recently went on a date with a super hot guy, and afterwards he told me that he thought I was so funny. And it is like, like a, a dagger in the heart for someone who is a Prada model to tell a comedian, you're funny. Well, yeah. That really? <laughs> no, I get that. It's so It doesn't hurt, but it's always just like, mm -hmm. it's just like the class system. Mm -hmm. has it, been confirmed yes because they he, he didn't need to get funny you had to get funny no i was like i had to, okay got yeah, it. but you'll always like, be funny it. and he won't necessarily always be hope a so model. you never know what can happen you yeah. never know <laughs> you never you know what's what you're walking down the street i could wake up tomorrow and i just be like i lost it yeah <laughs> oh well, everything's just a little sad everything's just a little sad and you're trying to be funny and it can't come out yeah, what if I showed you this amulet that I had that was like a cursed amulet? I was like, I wear this to be funny. <laughs> if it's ever removed from my person, I become the unfunniest person in the world. It was gifted to me under a bridge by a man with a joke. Judy Gold's joke book. <laughs> <laughs> it was told how to write a stand-up joke. You form an He's opinion. <laughs> And then Finally, you make a he said a bit from the book, yes. and like magic, <laughs> the <laughs> amulet <laughs> came to life. <laughs> I was lifted into the air, spun around. Off somewhere, you heard Judy Gold saying, "Ha ha ha!" She's the ultimate. Oh, next thing I knew, I woke up. Beautiful. And then. Here he is counting money all and day then long. I and then and then I fucking checked my bank account, bitch, and it said <laughs> comedy checks. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens. So no one, if you're gonna if you're gonna go hanging out with Matt, please. If you wonder why he keep his keeps his shirt on, we all know why. He's hiding his comedy gold underneath that shirt. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, I would take it off and reveal my fucking shredded body, mm -hmm. which is fucking cut from years of track. Yes, cuts. Cut. He has cum gutters starting from his shoulders. The cum could drip oh from his God. shoulders. My cum gutters are a mile long. That's how we actually measure a mile. We have Matt lie down and we just we go, OK, that's one mile of cum. Baby, people come to my body to bring their kids bowling. That's how high yes. the gutters are. Yes, yes. And sometimes I put up the fucking bumpers for the kids, depending on how good they are with the gum gutters. Bitch, a kid knelt down at my gutter one time and <laughs> it ripped it down into the gutter and killed it in yes. my gutters. I actually hear that the it clown lives in a fucking Matt's armpit <laughs> underneath his gum gutters, okay? Oh my God, because there's so much definition he could hide for centuries. That's No one would ever find him. I... I'm, you know what, Matt? 
but you can't see it. <laughs> Wow. I and think, I won't show it. I think we hyped you up. I think maybe Robbie's at least going to check out your Instagram after this. I know that. <laughs> He's got a chub. He's got a chub. He's got, he's got half, a, half of something going on. Half a bra. He's got a halfy. Yo. He's got a halfy. He's got something. Robbie? What? No, 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 I'm not hard. no, I'm not hard right now. He just now. ignores. But it was nice he just ignores. Because, no, I'm not hard right now. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks, Robbie. Good job. You couldn't even get hard <laughs> by the end of the podcast for us. Come on. Unbelievable. Well, Matt, he's not going to make it in porn. No, he's not. He's not going to make it in porn. They have to be hard at the drop of a hat. <laughs> they have to sign, show up, sign their W-9, they and be hard like these drugs. It's, they, no, they, they don't. They sure do. You're, and thank you. Thank you for saying that because then, then it's like, you know, people start to believe these things. That you can actually sexually behave the way they do in the pornos. Say, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I also got very uncomfortable. I don't know why. I get uncomfortable talking about porn for some reason. I, there was a period okay. of time I paid for porn because I was I'm so uncomfortable around it for some reason. Oh yeah, I pay for it. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm throwing away money too. That's good. I think I actually think it's actually respectable to be paying for porn. Sex work is work. They should be paid. Yes. Yes, Robbie. Yeah, I agree. Oh, beautiful. Okay. That's good. That's good. We have to make That's sure he's good. paying attention, Matt. You know, I, every so I signed up for it. I, I, think he's, I think he's been. I, be, I think up. he's been very present. Yeah. Thank you. Go I ahead. signed up for an OnlyFans in the beginning of quarantine, and then she was Whoa. like, uh, like a Trump lady. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, oh, yeah, this took no. a weird turn. No, yeah. She was like, you got to work in like that. libertarian. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is so weird. You got to work. <laughs> it was so funny to me. But it was just a you one month work. thing after that. I was like, all right, oh, maybe I'll find somebody You just kind of let it expire at that yeah. point. Yeah, I totally, totally it understand. Ran out. Matt, but, this was no. so beautiful that you were able to take time and come and fucking hang out and bullshit with me. I mean, you know that I love and respect you and think you're the funniest person ever. You have been for years. Thank you, Matt. You know how funny I think you are. You know I only got love for you, bro. This is beautiful. Do you want to plug I mean, anything? Never, remember what? Back in the day, I mean, back in the day, Sebastian fucking slayed it in one of my first web series called Broadway Ants, and I've been a huge fan ever since. <laughs> Yes, um, I was in Broadway Ants back in the day with Matt. I didn't. I was you were Dougie's. In Broadway Ants. Yes, you no, I wasn't. Aunt. I was Dougie's uh, well, nephew. Oh, well, Dougie's nephew. Yes, yes I was the nephew with okay, Pat. So anyway, I, I, I just had to had to sort of um throw that out there. But anyway, what are the things I want to plug? Uh, the podcast Lost Culturistas. If you liked any of the nonsense you've heard on here, you'll probably like my podcast. Um, Bo and Yang is on it. He's a uh very funny man. As people know phenomenal um, very fun and one of my favorite people on the goddamn planet love that and uh also i host a show on hbo max called hot dog Oof. which is a dog grooming competition show which is very fun and i'm on there with robin Thede, um who's an amazing comedian and jess rona who's like the instagram empress of dog grooming and it's really funny show and um it's the dogs are fucking cute as hell beautiful so you got to watch that when it comes back on february 4th yes everyone please check it out matt literally is a fucking is a star and the shit's burning bright okay so everyone oh! check them out now ouch okay and and on top of that kids hot as fuck okay <laughs> on top of that all right i was fucking waiting for <laughs> on it top of that. he said he said for the pocket he's like i'm gonna call you hot so much and then it was all about robbie which i get <laughs> Which I get. You know, I got lost in his eyes, Matt. I got lost in Robbie's eyes when I started his yeah. intro. When you look at his eyes, it's like a beautiful song is playing. I don't know. <laughs> Robbie. He goes, I don't know. Robbie. He's like, I got to go. Please. No, no. One, one nice to towel you, pick. One towel pick. It was pick. nice to meet you, too. One towel pick, I'm Matt wants. <laughs> Leave him alone. Okay. Him Robbie, what do you want to plug? No, just the podcast. Keep listening. Beautiful. Not about nothing. I love it. Please keep listening. Rate five star review. Please give my sweet little nephew boy some advice. He's going back to junior high. Please write in reviews some advice that you can give Robbie <laughs> as he goes back. He's struggling with the ladies. Okay. Uh, as always, all my hotties, we love you. All right, Robbie, hit the fucking music. <laughs>